Your radio on air online, late 96 one Saturday at the 70s. During the 1970s, not a lot of bands from the Milwaukee area managed to make the national limelight, but we are going to spotlight two of them that did over the next couple of weeks as we wrap up Homemade Hitmakers Month on the program. One of those bands had a national recording contract with United Artists Records, and one of their albums was called The Band That Made Milwaukee Famous, and they would be and are band boy, because once in a while, the original members still get together and play a show around the Milwaukee area even to this day. Original members of Bad Boy include John Marcelli, Joey Levy, Lars Hansen, and the fellow we're going to talk to right now from the original Bad Boy, it's Steve Grimm. Steve, thanks for joining us on the program. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Tell us, tell us the beginnings of Bad Boy. Well, originally it was Crossfire. Mm-hmm. John and I, the bass player, we grew up in Racine, Horlick High School. Okay. So that was pretty much, he lived there, I lived in Milwaukee. Prior to that, I graduated from Berkeley College of Music, and John came out there, we started Crossfire out there my last year. And, you know, did, a, did an okay job, but that's when Aerosmith and uh, Jay Giles and a couple other bands were breaking, so we knew we didn't really have a chance because they had signed them. But I thought, you know, if we went back to the Midwest... Uh, we'd certainly have a better chance of, of making some noise. And we played Memorial Hall. And for some reason, we were able to pack the place really? a couple of different times. Uh, and we changed the name there. Uh, a friend of ours knew somebody at United Artist and had been Alice Cooper's publicist. Right. And that guy was Bob Brown. Well, Bob Brown took it by the horns and pretty much acted as the manager, the producer, uh, the booker, everything. And he did a pretty good job, actually. It was cool, because they sent us to California, and they sent us to New York, and we recorded in both places, Warner Brothers and the Hit Factory in New York. And, um, you know, it was just a wonderful experience. In fact, we had Steve Hunter, Earl Slick, Ray Manzarek, and some other guy, I can't remember, who all backed us up on these records. Really? Wow. So it was, you know, it was quite a wonderful experience. Sure. And, um, you know, the whole thing kind of magically really happened. I just put it a few times, and we, you know, we were very lucky in that, you know, our... We actually had an album cover on uh, WKRP. Yeah, that's right. We had a uh, billboard on Judd Hirsch's dealy. I mean, we were, you know, it was a couple of flukes that just propelled the band into the limelight. But uh, when United Artists was sold, we couldn't land a major record deal out there. And that's really what, what, what we wanted to do. <clears throat> and if the chemistry is not prolonged it's much like a failed marriage and uh, that's kind of what happened and uh, shortly thereafter joe and lars left the band but I, we're still playing actually did a couple of shows already as the original 78 79 bad boy now e- now even back to uh, bad boys uh, days as crossfire you guys were concentrating on original material then well we've always played a few cover tunes of the era mm-hmm. you know, back then i think it was david bowie and Lou Reed, and, you know, we'd flick those in occasionally. Sure. But, I mean, if we, if we were to do a concert and did a one-show deal like we've been doing, uh, you know, 90 minutes, we can handle that with some good material. I might throw one or two covers in there. Right. But uh, I was never a great cover musician. I can't sing and sound like somebody else. I can't play guitar and sound like Steve Vai or whoever. You know, right. I my own is kind of a cross between blues and pop. And that's kind of what I grew up in Racine as a, you know, a follower of the blues, really. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying in regards to that. But you did have to do some covers at the beginning in order to you know to get the work at the bars and all that. No question about it. And today, probably worse than ever. If you don't play cover material, you won't make any money. You can play gigs up here in Milwaukee, for instance, but you won't make any money just to play your original material. So right. yeah, you know, uh, and and you try to find apropos music and I've always kind of gravitated to the stones or some kind of bluesy thing that I, I had some kind of soulful feeling to and we give it our own spin mm-hmm. now you just mentioned a few of your influences correct well what else influenced the music of bad boy well you know I always I've been to see the who a couple of times I love the power of the who and of course the Beatles and uh, you know that whole era was just as I say it was just so charming but I guess you really can't beat the rawness of the Rolling Stones. Right. You know, there's something about that uh, Keith, 
motif type of guitar lick that just has always hung with me and um uh, the, the, I, I would say basically, basically that. I mean, I was kind of a classically trained piano player before all, all of this, mm-hmm. but it's hard to stand up on stage and play a piano. So I kind of transferred my. Ta- I still love the piano, still play on occasion, but uh, you know, just so much. There's so many influences, and when you go to school and college, you you learn orchestration and all the uh, idiosyncrasies of uh, putting a putting some music together and mm-hmm. the right instrument with the right voice and so you know so many influences and you you try to portray that in, in a professional way